Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. Today we have a special video in store for you. Before we begin, I want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Cybrary. If you guys are interested in some free cybersecurity training and more, make sure you go over to cybrary.it. There's a link in the description below. And if you guys use the coupon code ITCQ50, you guys can save 50% off your premium membership over there at Cybrary so you can access their practice labs and actually follow along and do some of the things with them. But getting into today's video, we have a very special guest, Ali, or more commonly known as the Comet girl from the discord server has put together a linux basics video and we're proud to bring that to the it career questions channel today and you can find the second episode of the series that will continuously go on as long as ali can keep up with it i guess will be found over on the learn Cybersecurity channel so if you guys follow through this video and want to go to the linux basics part two of the series head over to the learn Cybersecurity channel there's a link in the description below for that video as well but for now let's go right into the linux basics video hey everyone and welcome to the beginning of the new let's learn series where each week we go through different tools software and all sorts of information that will help you develop your cybersecurity career. I'm Ali, and this week we're going to be looking at the Linux command line basics. A quick thing to note before we jump in, if you haven't already created your own personal account in Kali, then you'll see yourself, or rather your user, as root. Throughout this video, I will be using both the root account and my personal account. To see which account you're using, you can use the who am I command, which will display the account being used. Alright, so let's jump in. The first thing we want to learn is how to navigate the command line. Typing in pwd, which stands for present working directory, will show you which directory you are currently in. For those of you who are more familiar with Windows, you can think of a directory as a folder. You can use the list command, ls, to list both the files and directories contained within your current working directory. To navigate to another directory, you would use the change directory command, cd, followed by the name of the directory you want to open, for example, cd documents. It's important to mention that the Kali command line is case sensitive. cd documents with a lowercase d is different than cd documents with an uppercase d. Make sure you keep this in mind when you're navigating the command line or creating files. Once you've changed directories, you can use the pwd command to verify which directory you're in, or use the list command to list the files and directories within the documents directory. Looking at the list here, we can see that the directories are in blue and all documents are in white. To navigate back to the file you were just in, you can use the cd command followed by two periods. The command takes you back one level. If you want to navigate to a directory within a directory, you can use the change directory command followed by the path. For example, if we would want to get to the secret directory within the documents directory, we would use cd documents forward slash secret. A few quick tips before moving on. The command line can autocomplete your input given enough information. For example, I can type cd documents slash s and click tab on my keyboard, which will fill in the rest of the name for me. However, if I have another directory inside the documents directory that started with S, I would need to provide more information before it can correctly autocomplete it. Also, you can type in clear to clear at the terminal, which will help you stay organized. Let's look at creating new directories and files. Navigate back to your root directory by using the change directory command. To make a new directory, use the make directory command, which is mkdir, followed by the name of the directory you want to make. In this example, we will use test. Once you've entered the command, you can use ls to see it listed. Now navigate to the directory using the change directories command. To make a new file, you can use the touch command. The touch command was originally used to modify file information, as I'm sure we will look at in later videos. But for now, it's important just to know that if the file does not already exist, the touch command will create the file. Let's create a file named test file. To do this, type in touch test file. Once the file is created, you can use ls to see it within the directory. Now we have a file, but nothing is in the file. Let's look at how to add a file with text in it. For this, we will use the cat command. This is a great opportunity to learn about the help command. If you are unsure about how to use the command in Kali, you can use the manual command, which will display the reference manual for any command. To do this, type man followed by the command you want to look up. Let's look at the manual for cat. 
Here we have a bunch of information displayed about the cat command, including the name of the command, a short description of the tool, and examples of its use. It also lists out possible switches to use, which we will cover later on. If you get stuck on using a command, this is a great way to learn more about it. To exit the manual, press Q. Now let's make a new file using cat. To do this, type in cat followed by a redirect, which is denoted with the right facing arrow, or if you'd rather, the greater than symbol. Then type in the name of the file you want to create. In this case, we will use the name new file. Once you press enter, Kali will go into what's called interactive mode. What that means is that whatever you input in next will go into the file you are creating. I will add in, this is a new file. And when I'm finished adding the text, I will press Control D to exit. Now, to read what is on the file, we can type cat new file, and it will display the message we've added. We can even use cat to write over a file we previously made. Let's add some text to the test file. Type cat redirect new file. Then type in a new message. Display that message with cat test file and we will see it worked. If I want to instead add onto a message in a file, I'll type in cat with a double redirect, followed by my file name. Then I'll type in my added message and use control D to exit when I'm finished. Now when I read the file, it will have both messages. To make copies of files, you can use cp followed by the copy you want to file, then followed by what you want to name the new file. This is similar to moving files. You can move files by using mv followed by the name of the file you want to move, and then the path of where you want to move the file to. For example, we move the cool file back to the root directory. To remove a file, you can use the rm command followed by the name of the file you want to remove. The same can be done to remove a directory. However, if the directory is not empty, you will have to use the r switch dash r to clear it and remove it. Let's remove the test directory we have been working in. Navigate back to your root file and type in rm dash r test. This will delete that directory and everything it contained. Let's move on to installing software. We are going to install Terminator, which will help with terminal management down the road. Once we get it installed, we'll see how useful it can be. First, in the terminal, we want to search the cache, which is a place Kali source package names. The command for this is apt-cache search, and then you enter the keyword. Our keyword is Terminator. Once you've entered the command, the terminal will list all packages that are similar to your keyword. Looking at the list, we see Terminator with the description of multiple genome terminals in one window. Great, it's here so we can proceed to install the software. To do this, we type in the command apt-get install terminator. We see that Kali will start the install process. Eventually, we'll get a message during the installation that lets us know additional disk space will be used. Type in Y and press enter. Kali will continue to install the tool. If this is your first software install, you may get a message that says the system needs to restart and services will be interrupted. Basically what this boils down to is, do you want to be prompted for a restart when needed, or do you want to let the system automatically push the restart when necessary? I'm going to allow the system to restart automatically, but the choice is yours on your own device. This process is long, but you only need to do this once on the account. Once the terminal is finished up, Terminator will be added. Alright, so let's add it to our favorites for easy access in the future. Close out the terminal we were working in and click on the Applications icon. You might see Terminator on the first page, but if not, you can use the search bar to locate it. Right-click the Terminator icon and select Add to Favorites. Now let's open up Terminator and see how it's used. When it opens, it doesn't look much different than any other terminal window besides the red. But if you right-click inside the terminal, you get the option to split the window vertically or horizontally. 
This will help you in the future when we need to have multiple tools running. Great, so now we're more confident with navigating using the command line as well as installing software on a system. Make sure to really practice these concepts so you can really solidify the information and eventually it'll become second nature to you. If you have any questions or suggestions on topics we should cover, make sure to put it in the comments below. And if you want to follow me, I'm the comic girl on Twitter or join us in the Discord, which I'll put a link to below. And tune in next week for more coverage on Linux Basics. And until next time, see you next episode. Thank you very much, Allie, for doing this video for us. I really appreciate it. It was awesome. And again, make sure you guys go over to the Learn Cybersecurity channel so you can check out the episode number two on the series of the Learning Linux Basics. That's all we have for you in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any other comments, questions, concerns, make sure you hit me up in the comments below and let us know how Allie did in today's video. Make sure you check out Learn Cybersecurity and make sure that you guys check out cybrary.it and use that coupon code ITCQ50. I'd greatly appreciate that. As always, take it easy.